Throughout the course of time, humans have created thousands and thousands of stories in the form of movies, TV shows, books, and of course video games. And while each story is different, in general, a lot of stories share the same structure. On one side, we have this good person who's living life, and then they run into some kind of trouble that was caused by a bad person, and now the good person has to stop the bad person so that everybody can live happily ever after, right? Well, in the case of Nintendo games, that's typically the outline for most games. Here's this plumber that likes this princess, Big Turtle Man steals the princess, and the plumber ends up saving the day and getting the princess back to live happily ever after until it's time for Nintendo to release a new console and then we, you know, rinse and repeat. When it comes to Super Smash Bros, we've seen just about every iconic villain from the big Nintendo franchises join the Smash roster throughout the years. Well, with the exception of this guy. I guess being good at tennis doesn't really help your case as a villain. Even though you can look at the Smash Ultimate roster today and think, wow, just about every villain they can ask for is in this game. It doesn't mean that's always been the case. If we rewind back to when Super Smash Bros first released on the Nintendo 64, you'll notice that the game actually came with no villains. We didn't get any villains added to the series until Melee came out on the GameCube cube, and even then all we got were Bowser and Ganon, and I guess you can make an argument for Mewtwo as well. Well the other day I came across this trending topic on Twitter where people were making their versions of a 20 character roster for Smash, and it got me thinking, how about instead of making a 20 character roster for Smash, we make a 12 character roster for Smash to replace the original cast from Smash 64. Except instead of just adding characters, we can only add villains. That's right, flip that M upside down because it's trying to replace those Marios into Warios and create the roster for Smash 64 Villains Edition. And in order for us to create this roster, we've got to set a few ground rules for choosing characters. The most obvious rule is that these characters have to be villains, or at the very least anti-heroes, I guess. They basically have to have something that can justify them as a villain. The next rule is that they have to have been in existence from the Nintendo 64 era. I mean, I'm replacing the roster for Smash 64, not for Smash Ultimate, because Ultimate could have literally any other character. Sticking with the realistic options for the N64 era makes a lot more sense for this video, so we're gonna keep it simple and only add characters from that time period. And lastly, we need some diversity with fighter types. And what do I mean by that? Well, for whatever reason, they decided to make Every major Nintendo villain looked like they just finished an eating contest at an all-you-can-eat buffet, so that means we have to balance it out between heavies, lightweights, or medium-weight characters. And if that means cutting out an iconic villain or two to make room for a less iconic villain, then so be it. Alright, now that we've got that all out the way, it's time to start building this roster. Let's go ahead and get the easy ones out the way. First up is obviously going to be Bowser, the main villain from the Mario series, and probably the most recognizable villain from any video game on the planet. In a version of Smash featuring only villains, there's absolutely no way that we could exclude this iconic villain. Bowser was actually considered for Smash 64 at one point, and was eventually scrapped, but no worries here Bowser, you'll be front and center on the cover of this game. The next obvious pick will be my favorite Nintendo villain of all time, and that of course is Kennedy Man! Again, a staple villain that has appeared across multiple Kirby games, and again, another character that was actually considered originally for Smash 64, but was eventually cut. And while you could make an argument for Meta Knight over DDD, I think DDD is a much more iconic character. I mean, when Meta Knight was first revealed in the series, he didn't even have a name. It just makes more sense to me. And like I said earlier, so many Nintendo villains are heavyweights, and that's gonna include the next obvious pick for this game, and that of course is King K. Rool. Donkey Kong 64 was one of the best selling N64 games of all time, and that's for good reason. The game once again featured the primary villain of the Donkey Kong series, King King K. Rule, and honestly it's surprising that it took so long for King K. Rule to actually make it into a Smash game. In an all villains edition for Smash 64, you absolutely have to include King K. Rule as one of the primary fighters, and honestly I wouldn't even mind it if he just appeared in his boxing outfit from the final boss fight. Now, obviously we have King K. Rule in Smash today with Smash Ultimate, but even back then it would have been cool to see kind of a different moveset than what he has currently. Like I said, if he appeared in his boxing form, he probably wouldn't have, you know, projectiles like he has in Smash Ultimate, maybe they could kind of switch up his moveset a little bit. Either way, it's an obvious pick considering how big Donkey Kong 64 was for the N64. Okay, so far we've included three iconic villains that have all eventually made their way into a Smash game, and like I alluded to earlier, they are all heavyweights. So I think it's time to add a character that I could see classified as a floaty, and it's a character that we've never seen in Smash despite how iconic she is, and that's going to be Gruntilda from the Banjo-Kazooie series. That's right, the Wicked Witch from the Woods, one of the most despicable villains from Banjo-Kazooie. We haven't seen Gruntilda in a game in a long time, but this witch used to go through any measures to ensure there was nothing but pure chaos around her at all times. The moveset potential will be endless for Gruntilda because she knows so many different spells that are basically able to do anything you can imagine. And like I said, I could see her being a floatier character, maybe with the ability to fly around. And overall, she just kind of fits in with Smash. And I feel like if we would have gotten Banjo Kazooie like in an earlier game besides Smash Ultimate, I think eventually she would have made her way into Smash. It's really a shame that we've never seen her in Smash, but there's no way that she can miss out on a villain's edition of the roster. Our next villain once again comes from one of the most popular.
popular Nintendo franchise is currently and of all time, and this franchise was at its peak during the N64 era. And of course, I'm talking about Pokemon, but you might be wondering what villainous Pokemon could we add to a villain's edition of Smash? The only real villains at the time were Team Rocket, right? Which I say, yeah, let's let's add Team Rocket. Now this pick might sound a little bit strange, but hear me out. Team Rocket was prominent across the Pokemon anime, the trading cards, and of course the Pokemon games. So obviously their presence in a villainous version of Smash is justified. Of course, the easy answer for this pick would for me to just suggest that this character is a Team Rocket version of Pokemon Trainer, but realistically, I don't see the N64 being able to handle a character like that. Instead, just make a Team Rocket Grunt a playable character. And that might sound crazy, but we kind of already have that in Smash Ultimate today. I could definitely see this character filling the role of a Captain Falcon style character and maybe give them the ability to chunk Pokeballs as projectiles on top of it. This would honestly be a perfect fit for a villainous edition of Smash 64. Okay, now that we've added a few villains that we've actually never seen before in Smash, let's go ahead and fill in a few more of those obvious picks. And I already know what you're probably thinking, how have we made it through almost half the roster with no mention of Zelda or Metroid? Well, you see, I was I was getting to that. I just didn't want to start this video off by introducing every character that we've already seen before in Smash. We gotta kind of space them out, you know what I mean? And that being said, there's no way we can leave out Ganondorf or Ridley. I think these two are gonna round out the staple villains that kind of have to be in the game. You can't really exclude the main villains of some of the biggest Nintendo franchises to date. And yes, I kind of know that this goes against what I said at the start of this video by having too many heavyweights, but I mean, they, they could kind of just adjust the size of some of these villains, right? I mean, throughout every Smash game, it seems like they just want to make Ganon, you know, basically an echo fighter of Captain Falcon. And if that's the case, why does Ganon have to be a heavyweight when Falcon isn't? I think in this version of Smash, Ganon could be a bit leaner and kind of have a unique move set to make him a decent character, and ultimately that would make him not a heavyweight for this game. Ridley, on the other hand, he's never beaten the two big allegations. But to be honest, I've never really understood the argument that Ridley was too big for Smash when we've seen moments like this before, telling me K. Roll wasn't too big for Smash. Even though we never really got a Metroid game on N64, Ridley just makes sense to add to the roster. While Metroid wasn't the biggest series by any means in Japan, the Metroid series was very popular in the US, and a lot of people expected to see a Metroid game for the N64. That obviously never happened for a variety of reasons, but that doesn't take away from the fact that Ridley would be a staple character for this villainous edition of Smash. For our eighth character, we need to add another space villain, and no, I'm not talking about this guy. We've got to take it up one more level and go with the true villain from the Star Fox series, which of course is Andros. Andros has appeared in many forms throughout the Star Fox series, and if you've never played Star Fox before or you don't recognize him yet from what I've shown, I'm sure you'll recognize him after this. Andros has done a lot of evil things, including murdering Fox's dad, James McCloud, destroying multiple planets across the galaxy, turning an entire species into an army willing to sacrifice their lives, and putting together the Star Wolf team featuring Wolf. Even though Andros has mostly appeared as a floating head with floating hands, he wasn't always like that. So I think his inclusion to Smash would feature his appearance before he did a bunch of self-altering experiments that eventually drove him crazy. Dr. Andros was a mad scientist willing to do whatever it took to get what he wanted, and I believe he would be a great addition for an evil version of Smash, and kind of a better fit than a semi-clone of Fox. And that's going to close out our base roster for Smash 64 Villains Edition, but just like in the original game, we've got to add some unlockable characters. We still have four more characters that we need to unlock to complete this roster. Okay, so obviously we have to add another Mario character to this game because it's Mario, obviously, but I feel like there's only a handful of options considering we're only looking at characters pre-2000s. Obviously, Wario would be the easiest choice considering how often we see him in different Mario games, and another option could be Baby Bowser, who is also pretty relevant in a few different Mario games. But what about Kamek? This is basically Bowser's right-hand man, and Kamek was one of the main villains in Super Mario World 2. This would give us another projectile character with a unique moveset instead of just a smaller version of Bowser or another heavyweight character. It would also be a surprise to many because most people probably wouldn't expect to see him. And sure, Kamek mostly gained relevance later on in the Mario series, and especially recently due to the Mario movie, but this would still be a great pick for the first unlockable character to the roster. Come on, you didn't think I wouldn't add an actual Pokemon, did you? Of course we have to add Mewtwo to the game. Now, in the Pokemon universe, Mewtwo isn't necessarily a villain by choice, but he does do some villainous things, and I think the Pokemon movie helps paint that picture of him being a villain. Again, the Pokemon craze was real in the late 90s, so it makes sense that we would need at least two Pokemon reps for this game. We've obviously seen Mewtwo appear in multiple Smash games, and I don't really see his moveset being any different for this game. Having him as another unlockable character would be huge because of his popularity, and it only makes sense to go ahead and include him in this game. Now before you even think it, I know Majora's Mask released an entire year after Smash 64 came out, but this pick still makes sense to me. Zelda is one of Nintendo's primary franchises, and I think it deserves two reps for this game. Ocarina of Time released before Smash 64, and that game did feature Skull Kid, so I think it's alright if we go ahead and include Skull Kid from Majora's Mask. This would be a great way to build up the hype for a new Zelda game, and it would be a character that people are at least somewhat familiar with. Skull Kid is another one of those characters that's kind of just pure chaos, and if you've ever played with the assist trophy in Smash, you'll know exactly what I mean. This would be a great lightweight character to add, and it makes sense to have him be one of the unlockable characters 
characters since the main game that features him wasn't even out yet. His moveset would be unique from everyone that I mentioned so far and he would fill that 11th character slot. So far we've built up a roster of 11 villains which means we need one more to close out the list. We've already got the big name villains from Nintendo franchises, we've added second characters from the bigger Nintendo franchises, so who could we add as the final unlockable character in an all villains edition of Smash 64? M. Bison would be an insane addition to Smash 64. Imagine buying this game as a kid and the final unlockable character is from Street Fighter? While this may not seem realistic for the first edition of a Smash game, I don't think it's crazy to think that we add a character from a game that was top 5 most sold on the SNES. M. Bison is the biggest and baddest villain from Street Fighter and I think his addition to a game like Smash would have been unheard of back then. His moveset would obviously be similar to Street Fighter but simplified because, again, I can't imagine the N64 could handle a bunch of extra inputs. M. Bison would be one of the biggest surprises as an unlockable character and I feel like adding him to the game would bring a whole wave of players that wouldn't have picked it up otherwise. And that right there is going to conclude my roster for a Smash 64 Villains Edition. And I feel like we did a good job of including all the big name villains, a few villains that would just make unique fighters to the game, and a few surprises that would really get people interested in Smash. And like I said, this was just a fun idea I had considering it took us a while to get some of our favorite villains added to Smash, so I figured we'd just go ahead and start the series off with only villains. If you enjoyed this video or you want to see content similar to this, please go ahead and like the video and consider subscribing to my channel. These types of videos take me a very long time to make considering I do it all on my own, but anytime you guys let me know that you enjoyed it, I know it was worth the time and effort and it motivates me to keep pushing that content out. And feel free to share your ideas or wish lists of villains that you would have put on this list instead or if you're still hoping to see in a future Smash game. I always enjoy theorizing about what could have been when it comes to character additions and things like that. And lastly, I gotta give a big shout out to Smash 64 Remix, which is basically a ROM hack of Smash 64. All the Smash footage I used of characters that aren't actually in Smash 64 was from that game, so definitely look it up if you want to know more about the game. I appreciate you guys sticking to the end of the video and watching the entire thing. Really hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in the next one.